Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Today we've got another beer from uh, Sebastian Sebastian Sauer over at Freigeist Beer Kultur. And this is the Freigeist Ehrenfeider. Um, apologies about the mispronunciation of that to any uh, potential German viewers. And uh, yeah, this is an unfiltered out beer clocking in at 4.5%, I think that says. And uh, yeah, big fan of Fry Guys Vehicle Tour. Um, really enjoy the stuff that Sebastian does. Um, I was you know, lucky enough to attend a Meet the Brewer event with him and try some of his beers. And of course, I reviewed some on the channel. Um, and yeah, he was even at the uh, Regensburg um, Craft Beer Festival. And uh, his little stall was, it was next to the Pirate Brew Berlin guys. And uh, yeah, they were just playing music all the time. It seemed like really, really like a fun area to be in. And uh, yeah, uh, the writing on the back is really small. You probably won't be able to see that because the video quality is probably not going to be great. Um, but yeah, it's basically an unfiltered version of um, an alt beer. And uh, the only other alt beer I've had was from uh, Doubles, sadly. Uh, name? I can't remember. Um, and it was alright, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure if someone could well put it down in the comments. Even though I put links down below, so I'll see what it you know the, a little more information about the beer. So I'll stumble out of my words tonight. Don't know why. Um, then yeah, if you know more about this beer style, or if you've got any other good examples of um, um, an alt beer, then uh, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I'm always open to new suggestions and learning new things. That's why I do this. Yeah, it's not just about me talking about beers, it's about you know, me learning about beers as well. And uh, yeah, Sebastian Sauer's Fry Guy Spiel Vehicle Tour uh, certainly does some interesting beers. And uh, especially with older styles and sometimes somewhat forgotten German styles and doing something new with them. And yeah, some weird and wonderful brews have been made including... Uh, the infamous paella beer, which um, I did try to review, uh, one of my first reviews on this channel, but um, boy oh boy was that a gusher, and um, I stupidly forgot to keep the video, because uh, yeah, anyway, the smoke has died down, I don't really think there was any, to be honest, in the first place, so I'm expecting this to be, you know, rich, um, rustic, that sort of thing. It's got a nice hiss to it. And uh, my hair is absolutely terrible today. It looks like I've got a toupee on. Who cares? So yeah, I'm expecting a good old fashioned ale here. Uh, it's a nice, uh, really dark copper brown colour. Maybe slight orangey reddy hues in there as well, especially up to the light. And when you hold it up to here, uh, it just looks like a nice deep brown colour. And the beer poured with about one finger's worth of off-white head. So, uh, yeah, it looks, you know, like a good old-fashioned um, rustic drinking beer. I can't talk today. I do not know what's going on. And uh, in about half an hour or so, I'll be doing a live chat with a few beer tubers. So that's going to go down well. Anyway, let's give it a sniff. Surprisingly sweet. Um, I'm getting a bit of ginger in there as well. Then the malts come in. Sort of like musky malt. Maybe slight hints of caramel or toffee in there. Uh, more on like the burnt side. There's a very slight peatiness to it as well. Sort of reminds you of like um, a dusty blanket. <laughs> that's, that's just what popped into my head. Nutty. Yeah, those malts are really up at the forefront there. Slightly herby as well. Maybe a little bit of black pepper or white pepper actually. Yeah, it's not like a really nice smelling beer by any stretch, but the aromas there are pleasant enough. Anyway, let's tuck in. Cheers. Wow. 
Yeah, it, it for some reason, it reminds me of, like, older times. Older times? Times gone by, you know, like, a good old-fashioned beer. Uh, that's what I'm getting from this, out beer. It's got a nice smoky feel to it. Body is rather thin, actually. I was expecting it to be a bit more. Uh, but it's a little bit on the thin side, not watery or anything like that. The carbonation comes in nicely and works well within that consistency, if that's the right term. But yeah, I'm getting slight charred flavour. Combines with like tobacco, leather. Slight leatheriness on the aroma as well. It's what I'd imagine beers to be like in like a working men's club in Germany in like the 70s. It's definitely got that feel that it's going to put hers on your chest. But yeah, that, that's really about it to be honest. Um, just like the aroma, you can, you're going to drink it and you're not going to be like, mm, this is delicious. But it's pleasant enough. Um, it's not a vibrant beer by any stretch. I wasn't expecting it to be. Uh, even though it's got a lighter mouthfeel, the flavour profile uh, makes it a little bit more heavier. So you're going to take your time with it, maybe. And, uh, yeah, a very interesting beer indeed. It's, again, um, I just a few minutes ago reviewed the Lindemann's um, Kissus, is it called? The one that's... Cassus, or Cassus. The one that's with um, blueberries. Not blueberries, black currants. And that was like, you can't really drink it fast because it's so sweet. It's so, like, singy. It, like, tingles your teeth, that sort of thing. This is completely the opposite. Um, I recently made the mistake of having, like, a little session on Schlenkerler Rauch beer. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't hungover or anything like that. But you've just, the flavour profile of that beer is just so heavy. It's so rich. It's so warming. That you don't really want to session a beer like this one. And I wouldn't necessarily say sessioning a beer like this would be a good idea either. But it's definitely a nice supper. Uh, I say supper as in supping, not supper as in food. Um, and yeah. It's a really nice little beer. Um, nothing too exceptional. Um, it's not going to wow you or anything like that. But if you want a solid, old-fashioned look into German brewing history, then, um, yeah, this is definitely one to go by, and absolutely love that artwork. For some reason, the labels on these style bottles that uh, Fry Guys do remind me of, like, Doom album covers for some reason, um, and with, like, the hand-drawn hand -drawn typography. Um, I love the design um, throughout Fry Guys vehicle tours stuff. I mean, that cap is fantastic. Need to pick up a t-shirt with that on. But yeah, the Aerofider, again, apologies, um, unfiltered alt beer, yeah, you could definitely get that. There's a lot of flavour in there. If it was filtered, it would probably be a little bit more drier, you'd probably get more malts. But this, it's like dirty, if you get what I mean. You know, you're getting all that good stuff in there. And like I said, it's like putting hers on your chest. It's bready as well, brown bread, that sort of thing. It's something that your granddad would like to drink. And uh, yeah, so out of 10, it's definitely an 8 out of 10 for me. It's not my favourite Fry Guys vehicle tour beer that I've had, but uh, yeah, very enjoyable indeed. Speaking of which, if you want to see more of my Fry Guys beer reviews, link is down below to the playlist, as well as links to Fry Guys vehicle tour and more information on this beer. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you haven't done so already. A uh, massive thank you to everyone who subscribed up to this point. Uh, slowly approaching 100 subscribers, so a massive, massive thank you. And uh, yeah, I hope you will join me and continue to join me on my quest to try beers from around the world, even though predominantly German beers. But that's not a bad thing, and I think I've just snotted everywhere. So on that note, I shall see you all later, and uh, yeah, I hope you'll join me for another beer review. See you later, guys.